Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and we're going to be doing our lineup build for the tennis slate, which is about to start. Um, I've already updated the projections, and I'll give you a little insight on how this is done. And for the people who are investing in this, you'll see kind of the process behind it. And then we'll also take a look and see if we were good about getting unique lineups. So you uploaded my own custom projections in here with my ownerships and my um, and uh, my projections here. And even though, again, we're going to play 40 lineups, we're going to put 40. Actually, let's put 42 because we're going to play 43. So that we'll play one in the break point and, um, and one in the qualifier as well. So let, let's, let's, for the, let's do 150 max settings to get as, uh, as unique and as you know, aggressive as possible. So now it's going to build the 5,000 lineups in the background. And while we're doing that, again, we've already saved the contests. So um, I'm not gonna put the contest sim uh, settings in until this is done. And the reason for that is because I'm gonna use these 5,000 lineups that I'm building as the representative field. And it, it's not the greatest idea to do in other sports, um, but in tennis, uh, what I'm working on right now is this idea that the closer the projections are um, to, I guess, what everybody else is using, I guess that's the best I can describe this, um, the, you know, the, the less variant people's takes are on the players, the more likely it is that the, you know, the 5,000 lineups I build are going to be close to what the people are going to build. So what I think is useful in these types of sports is to use that as your representative field, because what we do is not, we don't just play our optimal lineups. We, we have lineups that have a range of outcomes, players that have a range of outcomes. So that if we have a situation where let's just say everybody's playing a, a player who is, you know, projected at 61 and we have one who's at 60 and the one who's being projected at 61 is going to be owned about you know twice as often as the one who's going to be 60, then the Sims will pick up on that and realize that the range of distributions of someone with 60 can some, you know, is going to outscore the person with 61 enough to make up for the excess ownership. Um, so that's why in a sport like this, where again, the, the projections are just so easy to come up with, um, it's really just a function of win odds and some very, very minor adjustments to play style um, that in this particular sport, I like to use, build a huge set of lineups and then let that represent the field that I want to compare my lineups to. Uh, so again, we're only going to be playing 40. So it's just a question of, again, how you rate the 40. I don't want to rate them based on, you know, the, the, the just the top projections because that doesn't really do anything for me. I want to sim these against this whole field and then sort them by ROI or risk adjusted ROI against that field. And I think in tennis, it's, it's particularly useful um, to do that. The other thing about it is, is one of the, the deficiencies of playing this way, uh, if you do kind of sim against yourself sort of, is that it, in some sports, you want to factor in that the field is going to have a good amount of bad lineups um, where, and if you do that, when you sim against yourself, you're simming against all good lineups, it's kind of flawed, but because, uh, tennis, it's really, you're not going to get that many bad lineups. Um, then I don't think that deficiency is particularly relevant here. So we are going to sim these against build, uh, two, which is the one that I just did. That's the line painter. And the break point as well. Again, I, it, I'm going to use the same distribution for all of these contests. Now, that's not the best, okay, I have to tell you. But um, I think it's okay to do this. All right, so we're going to run the Sims right now. And the other thing that we want to do is, again, we're, we're going to do the min uniques thing where we try to get, you know, some good diversity of lineups without... Um, without sacrificing too much in projection integrity. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this metric here, average uh, projected score up here at the top. So it's gonna keep track of what the average projection of this portfolio is so that when we make changes, you'll see the impact of it. So for example, go to line paint, we have 10 minutes, right? We have line painter, 
We've sort of high risk adjusted ROI and we don't really care who we have yet. We'll look at that after it locks actually. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to go to as many min uniques as possible to not affect this average projection that much. So it's 318.5 right now. So now we go down to min uniques two and it only drops to 318.4. Then we go here and it drops to 0.7. So that's a decent number. And then here, it drops like by four points. So that's that's the squeal point. So we're gonna go back to min uniques three, and that's the setting we're gonna use uh, in this in this line painter. And I'm hoping that we get mostly, if not all uniques from doing this way. Um, now with breakpoint, uh, again, we're just gonna play one line lineup anyway, so it doesn't really matter um, whether we do 43 lineups, min uniques, it doesn't make a difference. But what we are gonna do is in the qualifier, um, we're going to do at least min uniques too, um, so that uh, I'm not competing against myself, I guess, uh, for a seat. Well, actually, they're two separate contests, so it's not that big a deal. Um, so let's go min uniques too, anyway. And then we'll put these in the two king of the baselines. And then we will go ahead and download them. And, and we're off to the races, okay? And that's really the, the end of the story. You know, again, mo most of this kind of is done pre-flop, you know, with, with making sure the projections look good and, and all that stuff. Um, once you get here, the process for me is, is relatively, I want to say automated, but, um, but it's relatively standard, okay? Um, now, what we could do, we could do, we have some time, like kind of a geo-mean test to just make sure that we're not, you know, running the risk of getting too duped. So let's go back to the line painter. We'll resort these by risk adjusted ROI. So these are the ones we're going to be playing, but actually what was it in Unix 3? And um, let's see what the geo mean looks like. So what we're doing here is, is a, a primitive guesstimate of, of what you need as far as ownerships to make sure you're unique. So the contest size is 2745. So we go to the geo mean, um, calculator which we have what's oh 2745 so we put this in 2745 in, in, in a contest that has six entries you know six players per lineup and with one dupe or not even one dupe uh you could do if you really wanted to get to get funky you could go point one dupes and you could do that in when you really want to get different you know but here it's a big big enough slate where you just put one dupe so as long as your geo mean is about 26 or lower, you're, you're in good shape. And even if you went to 0. 0.5 at 23, you'll, you'll see that most of these are, are pretty, we're looking at this number here, geo mean, it's like none of these are particularly chalky anyway. So um, just, there are just so many, you know, 24, 25, uh, whatever match slate is big enough where you don't really have to worry too much about that. But we're gonna check after the slate locks to see, um, to see what, you know, what the uniqueness looks like. As a matter of fact, what if we did that? We already up, we up, we're already uploaded those. I wonder if we could do another set just to kind of see what that would look like. So let's just say we went to, you know, point one dupe. So we really want to make sure we're unique. Okay. And let's say we want to do a geo mean of 18.2. I want you to see what that would do to the average projection. So right now it's 317.771. So let's just take a look. Geo mean less than, let's just say 18.2. So again, uh, let's see, it was 317, right? That's what we're looking at. Uh, well, it actually didn't do too much to it, which is kind of, kind of weird, right? So what does that mean? Are we supposed to do this? Well, I mean, the fact is, is that most of these were below this anyway. So I don't really think we're even changing too much. So we, we may as well, right? If it's not gonna impact the average projection, we may as well, we may as well do this. So let's go ahead. Um, let's put these instead in the, uh, in, the, uh, in the line picture. That was, uh, I'm glad that we did this. You know, so the lowest ownership possible 
to still maintain the integrity of the the projections. I mean, that's really what you're what you're looking to do, right? In DFS. So um again, and I never like to look and see who I have. Um I I, I used to. Um, and it's not hit on time, it's not hit on don't care, but I just don't want my biases to to get in get in the way of the process. Um and I know what you're saying. Well, well just don't let it then. What's wrong with seeing who you have? What if what if by accident you have like a hundred percent of a per, of a player? Would you want that? Uh, I don't know. Maybe I would. I don't know. So uh, I'm not just kind of flexing or showing off by by playing this way. Um, but I, I listen. It's worked for me, and, and I will say that of all of these GPPs that I win, it's almost always the winning lineup is something I never would have played if I looked. Really. So we're just going to go ahead and continue to do this. Um, okay, so it's five minutes till locked, as you see, 10.56. So I could just go ahead and just kind of just screw around and talk about nothing for four minutes. But instead, I am going to pause this, and we're going to come back once the um, once it starts, and we're going to see what the uniqueness is. All right, so we're off, and let's take a look at the, uh, at the uniques, and let's hope that the sports projection site is... Uh, working this time because it wasn't really scraping the way I needed it to last time. Let's see. Uh, let's see, tennis. Um, oh, there it is, right there, perfect. So we will upload our projection, I mean, our uh, contest file and take a look and see what our uh, uniqueness is. Okay, so let's take a look and see how we did Caves. Oh, not good. All right. So we owe we owe six push-ups. Okay. Um 40 at five dudes, but only 34 uniques. 24. I don't know. I think I owe six push-ups because let's compare to other people, by the way. Now, there are people here that played 82 entries and almost had all unique. So this is this is poor. This is not a good job by us. So we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do those six push-ups right now. I don't think you guys are gonna see that, but yeah, we gotta we gotta go ahead and do this uh, maybe off the camera here. And believe me, for me, six push-ups is not a big, it's not so all right. There are six. But of course, at my advanced age, six push-ups is not great, not so not so easy. All right, so now let's take a look, I guess, at our exposures here. Um, go back to Saber Sim and do that. So in the line painter, we are getting 51% um, Bianca Andrescu, 46% um, Svitolina, 39% Pliskova. Um, but again, like this is... I don't know how useful this is for you guys, but it depends on how they're all combined. So we will, um, I guess that's all I can do for you guys right now. I mean, these, this is who you can root for. The other thing I guess I can show you is in the, um, in the big buy-ins who you can root for as well. And again, this is just for people that can't really access the DraftKings lobby. So in the break point, this is what it looks like. And our one, little pivot here is Lynette at 7.5% ownership. And then that's in the break point. And then in these two qualifiers, actually you guys didn't participate in this, but whatever, I'll just show you. Uh, we have two kind of low owned guys, uh, Kekmanovic and Pliskova over here. That's in number 85. And then is this the other one? And this is, this one also has Pliskova. So Pliskova is kind of the low owned piece. Um, and uh, that's pretty much it. And that's the whole process. And hope you guys uh, uh, learned something from that. And that's it.